You have reached the Geek Elite. Good luck. Hey. Oh, hey, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, talking about Superman. Oh, cool. I could talk about Superman. I could talk some more about Superman. We know. I'll bet a few people would want to get in on this. I'm down. You know it. That sounds like fun. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do it. We can call the show Men of Steel. And you can find it at certainpov.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. Welcome listeners, welcome JV Pickers, host Sway here, back with Working Together, bringing you a playlist worth getting lost to by our collective brain trust. This week's theme is music videos, so grab your quarters, pick your dibs, Geekly Media presents Jukebox Vertigo. We have ourselves a very cool table, which is one of my favorites, we have to pick everybody's brains today, and a very mixed uh, set of brains today. We have ourselves a debut on this show, someone who we've been hyping at the end of every episode, and also, shout out to We Have Issues, our we're producer, Liz. I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does exist. Liz, um, yes. want to tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and why you have been not absent to the show. You, you are very much around, but this is like your debut, and we've been around for a while. So where have you been? Yeah, um, I've been um, living life, honestly, traveling, managing um, a Tasmanian devil I adopted, and <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> Sorry. Marker. <laughs> he looks like one. one. Um, yeah, and doing uh, massive amounts of education um, through the community college. So it's it's honestly, it's very time consuming. <laughs> so I took this <laughs> semester off. So you you should be seeing more of me this time. Yes, and we hope so. Lots of uh, ideas that we like to talk about behind the stage and uh, behind the scenes and lots to do with reading. So next up on the table, we have ourselves Daniel. Hey, man, hey, it buddy. feels so good to come back after, I guess, uh, two weeks or maybe a month now. I don't know. It just feels like a long time lapse. So it feels good to be back. You missed been the a best time. Your last home was solo projects, but you missed emo and man. You missed the oh, best man. time. I know. I know. I know. I know. I wanted to have an emo night party, but in the end, it was just like our emo little crew, and it was delightful. <laughs> you missed out. <laughs> I bet. I'm so pissed I missed that episode. I wanted to be part of it so bad. You have no idea. <laughs> Making her return. Everybody, please welcome Jess. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming back to the show, and I can't wait to hear what your music, favorite music videos are. Oh. But, well, of course, we'll get to that. And, of course, as always, we're going to have ourselves Keith. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to say except Liz made it. And <laughs> I was always not joking. I hyped her up for about a month now. It Being is. like, Liz wants to do it. It's I'll real. I'll believe it she's, when I see it. She's very much real. This episode's <laughs> real. Me. It's happening. This will be my first and last <laughs> appearance on Jukebox Vertigo. <laughs> we'll see. There was a, a tease a few weeks ago when Liz was tempted to sh uh, join on this episode. And I was like, okay, but those are just teases, right? So we'll see what she actually brings to the table. But before we get to that, we need to just plunge everything that we've been listening to besides uh, for our picks. I had myself a very delightful last two weeks of music. So let's get to let's get down to some recommendations. I'll start with my like meh, which is only really one meh. It was I actually got down to the uh, Enrique Iglesias final volume one album, mm. and you know what? It was actually pretty okay. I was I I'm pretty stoked for volume two. If you kind of call something volume one, there should be a sequel to it. Uh, that was really kind of like kind of like the subpar stuff. Other than that, like the I was kind of disappointed on the Neo what was ep but then in the name what was i once i clicked on it i was like wait those are familiar and this just kind of got an ep of greatest hits so if you need a little mix of neo there's like a, a recent one so it's all kind of like the songs you already know 
um, singles, Google had Under the Sun, and you know that's going to be delightful. And I didn't know this was already his third single, and they all kind of had like the same kind of uh, uh, art style uh, for the cover for it. So I actually expect an album that I didn't know was happening. And then, whew, just yesterday, when was it? It has not been that long. Snow the product was 24 hours. Whew, my God. What a great, it's a freestyle. It's just literally less than two minutes long. And oh my God, I literally get lost, like being like being behind her words. And it's not up until she starts like switching it in Spanish where I'm like, okay, that's like my safe spot. I can, I can tell what she's saying. And then, cause like the, I mean, even for English, it's like, I mean, I've heard fast rappers with the way she just like her flow. It's just like, I just get lost in all of her quickness and her, like, her, and her swiftness with like just all of everything she's like throwing out. Love it. Love some of the product, which such a, such a uh, shout out. I should have confirmed it, but I'm not going to doubt her that she actually is nominated for a Latin Grammy for the biz rap volume mm-hmm. 39, volume 39 is like, what the fuck? And that is a great fucking that track too. track is, it blows my mind. It's, Since you brought it up, I put it on at least once a week. It's such a great fucking track. And I, and I put it on a loop because it could loop so perfectly. Like mm-hmm. She just... She loses her mind on that. I track. fucking hope she gets it. Oh, it's about time. Like, it's her time for terrain. I think she's going against um, Bad Bunny, though. <sighs> we'll see. Damn it. Fuck. We'll see. All right. <laughs> um, next up, not that it's like on like my least favorites, but I literally just got down to it today based on Keith's recommendation. So I'll let him actually like uh, get down to it. Uh, but I did my, my few words was on the there was a, a tribute album to the Velvet, Velvet Underground. The Velvet Underground. Thank you. Yes. And you shouted out, I was like, at least listen to the, the Iggy Pop track and um, the Venus and Fur, because mm-hmm. obviously Venus and Fur. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, cool shout outs. And then I click on it, I was like, yo, there's Kurt Vile on this shit and, and uh, Thurston Moore. And then I was kicking myself in the head. I was like, fuck, we just had solo projects. And I didn't think of, I didn't even think of <laughs> Thurston Moore. Uh, but it's like, yo, like Thurston Moore being the guy from uh, Sonic Youth. Right, and so it's like yo, and so it's like not for sure. I really got down to it, and it's actually very delightful. So I definitely like 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 all all the mix of the song, sounds and songs. Mm. And so moving on to just the shit that I really really got down to, um, Alien Weaponry with uh, Tangora, and this was not the Australian. I take back what I said. New Zealand band uh, Alien Weaponry. It's a trio band, and these guys are actually really dope. Uh, so because they. Uh, being natives, they actually have songs in the uh, Maori uh, uh, n- native language. Yep. So like they're like heavy fucking songs, and they look kind of like like just like like surfer white dudes, but it's like them being natives, like they fucking like get down to it. It's really really dope shit. Uh, so that one was kind of, and that's being like my the least stuff I the my least favorite stuff that I really 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 got uh, down to. The next three things, okay, let's start on this one that came out first. Lil Nas X. With Montero, word. I know we're kind of late on it now, but because we recorded the day it came out, mm-hmm. but I tell you, it's been on fucking repeat the last two weeks. It, God, it, it's it's been my fallback whenever I was like, okay, I know I shouldn't listen to the next two things I really do want to talk about, but it's like, man, this is just like the coolest fucking thing. I really thought it was gonna be something else, and then he just surprised me with like these like pop punk songs, like that's what I want. With like just like putting that little teaser in there and be like, okay, I hear it. Like I, I jam out to this in that pop punk way I, I listened to in high school. And then two tracks later, or an interlude and a track later after that, after the Doja Cat song. Lost in the Citadel. Oh my fucking God. I literally just want to fucking bob around it every single time. I repeat it every single <laughs> time. Lost in the Citadel is literally the best song on the album. Uh, I could just get lost to that sound, that that song. It's just, it's it's so fucking sweet. Um, very very good stuff. I really thought it'd be more like like more stuff like 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 with Scoop and like if it was gonna be like the other th- kind of more throwaway tracks. But no, the whole thing was just such a great fucking vibe. Loved Montero. I probably one of my one of my favorite albums of the of the album so far of the year so far. Now, the next two things I'm trying to think of how I'm going to talk about them. Okay, fuck it. Dead Sarah. Dead Sarah first, because I wrote them down first. Dead Sarah with Ain't It Tragic. Oh, I just wanted to snap this fucking board right now. They're just, they go so fucking hard. Another trio where it's like hard rock, punk blues, post-hardcore. 
in your face, like just like okay. We just want to shout shout them out there. Dead Sarah, if you ever listen to this episode, Emily and Susie, I know you already called dibs on guitar, but you don't have a bassist on your lineup. You obviously you have your drummer. I'm I'll be I'll be your bassist, yes man. Just give me your tabs. I'll learn it all. Just tell me what to play. I'll be your fucking bass man. Listen to this fucking band because they go apes. I mean, like the way Susie just commands the mic and just oh, it just fucking rocks the whole fucking way through. And like uh, Any Tragic was such is such a, g- a good one. And then to still be blown away by again my arguably my other favorite album of the week so far because Spirit Box. Let me fucking tell you about Spirit Box. Metalcore, post metal, progressive metal, 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 metal. Very fucking dope. Where this band came from was if you ever listened to I Wrestled a Bear once from back in the day, this is the band from their second singer after like I Wrestled a Bear once uh, disbanded. This is not that old school hardcore that was from like po- the very popular in the late 2000s, 2010s. This is metal done so sweetly. Like <laughs> I tried to get kids to, to, to listen to it. He was on he was on his own metal vibe, which is cool. But in my end, I was just like, bro, this is my metal vibe. <laughs> like, like it's, it's not like full on. Like, I mean, it is very heavy. But man, when she can just like like when yeah, when Courtney can just like take it into like her clean vocals, it's just like it finally clicked with me. I was trying to say that but I was like really toasty on, on on a good drive. This album makes me feel like like what uh my sanctuary from Kingdom Hearts, wow. not. Yeah, yeah, not not the sound, not, not not the sound or the song, but in your heart, you know how you just want to pop the fuck off. That feeling, that is Eternal Blue by Spirit Box. I, I there's no there's no other way I can compare it. Like the way she she can just like sing so sweetly, and then just fucking rip into the sweet breakdown, almost and every other song. Really fucking good stuff. Uh, Spirit Box Eternal Blue was arguably my favorite my favorite listen to. It's gonna be really hard to put it down. Now that there's about 20 minutes for Dying Wish to come out, and I've been really, fu- they've really been waiting for that album to come out. Um, so yeah, like good year in metal, which I, I always love. And oh yeah, and before I forget, going back to Lil Nas X, that's what I want. Also got covered by Scott Two Network, which is a great channel where they just do nothing but covers uh, Scott covers a bunch of different songs, and they covered uh, that's what I want, and it just came out so beautifully like in that got in a perfect scott way like there's some covers where it's just like hey, it's it's okay for a cover this one just came out really fucking good and also shout out to um the person that's only on the uh, like the person running that channel because they uh, they're also part of uh we are the union and they are the uh, it's, it's another ska band and which is why he runs his own ska channel so yeah listen to scott to network and that's what i want uh because that was a great great cover as well now liz bouncing it over to you would you like to tell our listeners what kind of music you listen to, you like, vibe out to, follow it up with what you've been like listening to, listening to recently? Oh man, okay. So I'm just looking yes. at my Spotify, okay, and I've got top songs 2020, Sea Shanties 101, and uh, <laughs> my like songs. It's my only list. My only playlist. You've asked for this. <laughs> okay. <I know>. Um, <laughs> So I like a lot of pop. Um, I really, especially with like, I don't know the exact term, but anything with like a hard like percussion beat, like I like EDM and dubstep. (laughs) So um, like I just discovered this song called uh, Magnetron. Um, It was, it's pretty dope. Um, I listen. So yeah. And like, angry i like metal but like dragon metal is probably my second favorite genre of music so that's where my top songs of 2020 is it's basically a lot of metal with like the occasional female artist um singing like these painful like angry songs <laughs> that okay, gets to I be my sent, genre <laughs> i should have sent you the spirit box link then <laughs> yeah, yeah i was gonna say God, that sounded yeah. interesting um yeah, oh, and Linkin Park, of course, my OG sin- mm. fan since their uh, Matoria album. So, yeah, l- currently I'm listening a lot to um, – Hol- I like Halsey's new album, Ooh, okay. uh, mm. If I Can't Love, uh, I Want Power. That's really mm. good. That's really good. And then, um, yeah, I would say that's kind of like my current, like, 
I'll go to that. And then I just kind of go from there. Basically nice. like whatever comes up right and recommend it after that. <laughs> nice. And uh, Daniel. Yes. You've been jamming out after a whole month of not wanting to be with us. <laughs> so bring me the horizon, drop the new single with uh, Tom Morello. So okay. listen to that. And I mean, I like their, you know, angrier phase, but I also like their kind of more poppy mellow phase of bring me the horizon. So uh, I've been doing a lot of that. Um, Ghost released a new single off of the soundtrack of uh, for Halloween Kills. Not my favorite single they released, but it's still pretty good, pretty catchy. So I really do like it. Uh, my friend introduced me to uh, Mango Negro. Um, they're like crosses in a way, I want to say, or at least the album I listen to. Um, and but and it's in Spanish, so it's a really, really good album. Highly recommend it. Um, also has like some EDM influences, industrial influences in there too. Um, and then I listened to, so I watched a little mini ghost documentary, I guess, uh, because Tobias Forge, who is a lead singer, Papa, um, didn't want to pay, um, the lead guitarist who is also a co-writer for their songs. He quit the band, started his own band. It's called, uh, Magna Carta Cartel. Um, you can, a lot of the guitar riffs and influences from ghost definitely trans transpose or uh cross over to that band really really good really solid a lot of instrumental stuff but a lot of vocals and then um there's a lot of people i want to see that are coming here um except for this one i've just been on a loud luxury kick so edm stuff um purity ring because they're coming um also listen to oh god where is it uh rocky horror because you know it's almost halloween um and then the the show is coming to phoenix so i'm gonna go watch it sometime soon um and then listen to oh god where is it uh laid back luke because he dropped the neat ep and then since i'm a big fan of kaigo he dropped a couple of new songs uh, i've been listening to kaigo as well um and that's pretty much uh what's been on my list Look at nice. you stepping up and listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you said you're gonna, you're gonna go see Purity Ring. Yeah. Ah, oh, sick as fuck. Okay, cool. December. I just can't remember what date, but it's close to the holidays. But yeah, I'm gonna go see Purity Ring. Nice. And next up, Jess. What have you been jamming out to? Um, honestly, not a lot lately. Um, I've been having to listen to books for other podcasts and stuff. <laughs> And book clubs that I'm in, but I've been having trouble going to sleep at night. And so I have discovered on YouTube um, Ambient Worlds, which they do like music from movies and from video games and make them, I don't know, just a bit more melodramatic and add in like ocean waves or rain sounds. So I've been listening to all their Star Wars ones because that's like some of my favorite just cinematic music. So it just chooses the like, naturally slower songs like princess leia's theme or um the force theme too and they kind of add in this background like it's tattooing so you hear the sound of like sand blowing by Mm. and that's been getting me to sleep my favorite one of those though is all they have skyrim ones which is like one of my favorite video games and that that music is just so soothing like not the battle music but just the walking around the forest music and it's literally just them showing little scenes from Skyrim wow. and playing the, <laughs> the really nice songs that I like. So I've been listening to a lot of that to get to sleep like every night. And it works. I'm like out within 10 minutes staring at the TV. Nice. And said Skyrim, I was just imagining you laying there like, dun, da da dun, da da dun. Just like, oh, so soothing. Not that one. It's like the like the white, what is it, White Home and... uh yeah, yeah, you know the city music, and then all of a sudden, hey, so, <laughs> there's a dragon flying overhead. What dang. are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also, I've been trying to get back into writing again, so I have a playlist for one of the novels that I'm writing um, called Ten Years Gone," which is based off the Led Zeppelin "Ten Years Gone." Mm. So there's quite a few Led Zeppelin songs on this playlist, but I also got stuff like. Um, hidden citizens and they do that like epic trailer type music and two wei i have a bunch of those on there and pink floyd and then i have like 911 by lady gaga which is like my favorite song from her latest album and um illo milo by billy eilish like inspired 
my main character like that whole thought and feel you get from that song like this is exactly where her trauma comes from like yes <laughs> this is it so yeah and then um the weekend's newest i think it's my I don't know if it's his newest single anymore, but he came out with a single, I think last month or something, um, Take My Breath. That one is just like, I've got a fight scene coming up and that's going to be it. That's I'm going to be listening <laughs> to that on repeat like Love over it. and over to choreograph all that fighting. So, so yeah, that's kind of just ambient music and writing music. That's nice. what I've been right, listening to. Next. All right. And Keith, what are your thoughts of me on music since we've uh, been on? So I listened to the St. Vincent album. Mm-hmm. It's actually the soundtrack to uh, the Nowhere Inn, which is a movie starring St. Vincent. Ooh, okay. And it's about music. Um, it's really, really mellow. If if you're into something like that, uh, it more, it's mellow for St. Vincent even. Like so, but it's it's pretty good. It's a good soundtrack album because soundtracks are supposed to fade in the background, you know. So um, yeah, I, I I enjoyed it for the most part. It was fine. Uh, my thoughts on Montero by Lil Nas X. I loved it. Um, when me and Josue talked about it about a week ago, I pointed out how I like the singles more now that I have the whole album. Oh yeah. Like, like industry baby is, I was kind of like, I don't know about this song. And then when I heard it in the context of the album, I'm like I love this song. It's probably my yep. favorite song on the album. Yeah. So I know Liz listened to, or watched the videos with me speaking of our category. Yeah. Every time, every music video he releases, we've been watching. So pretty good. I really <laughs> like that. Insane. That's what I that want is... one. I think that's my favorite so far. Yeah. It's so good. But that, I, I dug that album. It's up there with any hip hop album this year for me so far. Hmm. It's between him and, you know, one I talk about every week, I'm not going to bring up again. So, um, moving on, uh, I did give Spirit Box a chance. I was so not in the mood for it, and I just, I, I can admire her vocals, and I definitely want to go back to it. I'm Please just do. not in a heavy mood at all. <laughs> like so, um, I was going to say, Jess, if you need uh, stuff to, li- to listen to when you go to sleep, that Spirit Box album. Oh my god! No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, things I usually listen to that I, I you know, I'll just go through. Uh, listen, went back to Tame Impala. <laughs> Uh, I'm back on my dream car kick. Uh, Steven nice. remind me Stan Atlantic existed. <laughs> Those all kind of got listened to, but now for the new stuff, I only got a few things. Um, first of all, I'll start kind of on the low end. Third Eye Blind has a new album out, and it's boring. <laughs> boring. It's the most boring album I've ever listened to. I got three tracks in and turned it off because I couldn't do it. Didn't care. Um, next. Uh, I'm trying to think where to go from here. Okay, yeah. Next, okay. I told Hosway is hyped for this review because I've been hyping it since last night. Um, Cold War Kids put out an album. Oh yeah, called New Age Normus Three, and my review for Cold War Kids is actually a story. <laughs> so here's the story. What I imagine happened when they made this album is Cold War Kids went in with an idea, and they didn't tell the producer what the idea was, and they're like, "We have a perfect idea for an album. These are the songs we want to record." And he's like, all right. So he just pressed record. He did nothing. He let them do their own thing. And after they put the album out, he's like, what's with this album? What, what were you guys doing? And he's just like, well, it's to serve one specific thing, one specific need. And the producer's like, yeah, but the song, I mean, the album, it's, it's not great. I mean, it's not terrible. It's, it's literally the definition of okay. And he's like, yes, but what we're trying to do is make an entire album for those kids from Glee to cover so that we'll get the royalties from their covers. And then the producer goes, Glee was canceled years ago. (laughs) It's literally my definition of this album. Every song sounds like, oh, is Blaine going to sing this one to Kurt? Like, it's just, oh, I hate it. Like, it's just so, it's cold oatmeal. Okay, no, no, it's not cold oatmeal. You You ever go to a restaurant and your food comes and it's not good, but it's not bad enough to send back? Yeah. Yeah. That's Cold War Kids. Oh, jeez. <laughs> just don't like edible. It. They didn't technically do anything wrong, but it's just, you're just annoyed. You're like, this could use some salt or <laughs> like, yeah, that's the Cold War Kids album. It's not bad enough to send back. It's a that. solid C minus. <laughs> like, so, positive stuff. Um, Sufjan Stevens put out his fourth album since the show began somehow. <laughs> like, I keep reviewing them. This is easily the best one uh, by a pretty wide margin. Uh, it does feature Angelo D'Augustine, 
Um, so yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. It sounds exactly like a Sufjan Stevens album sounds like. I don't have to explain to you what that sounds like. Um, and then I'll Be Your Mirror, a tribute to Velvet Underground and Nico, uh, as Josue kind of teased. Um, it's a really interesting album and it's got a great, weird bunch of guest stars. As you mentioned, Kurt Vile's on there, Thurston Moore, Iggy Pop, Matt Sweeney, Michael Stipe's on there. Mm-hmm. Which is really weird. Like, um, but yeah, to me, the highlight is the Venus and Furs cover, which is just a legendary song, anyways. But the entire album is really good. It's just really mellow, except for European Sun, which is the Iggy Pop song. Yeah. Which I was telling Osway has this awesome driving punk beat, like, like a uh, late eighties, early nineties punk, where it's just a driving beat, and the lyrics are almost just the singer yelling at you about something political. That's what it felt like. Yeah. But it wasn't. And so I, I really liked it though. Um, but yeah, really, really good album. Surprisingly, it came out of nowhere. I didn't really expect it. So, um, other than that, I haven't been really listening to much of anything. Um, mostly been listening to podcasts, to be honest. So, um, which is a good thing in what we do. So yeah, that's going to be it for me. Sweet. So now moving on to the actual addition to the next page on the jukebox music videos, Ah, man. There was a time, I mean, at least to me, there was a time where music videos was just like a treat. I feel like I don't, we don't get that anymore. I mean, I think we're just spoiled by the internet where we can just hop on and watch any music videos. But mm-hmm. that 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 feeling of like being on the right channel at the right time, yeah. you know, that you're gonna catch your music video. I just, th- those those are cool, and I just it just sucks that it's like that. I mean, it's already just such a dried out joke, but it's like MTV not being music television. It's like there was something there, like TV supposed to be TV for like a channel for something, and it's like we had our music one and now it slowly faded away with reality music to, uh, shows. But in those little, in those little pockets of uh, TV runtime, all those uh, TV slots, we did get some sweet, sweet stories to our songs. And that is what we're going to share this time. So Liz, are you a fan of music videos? I am a fan of AMVs or anime Ooh, music videos. Yeah, that's right. yes. <laughs> as nerdy yes. as that is. Yeah, no, that's actually, I didn't, so I didn't have cable really for a lot of years growing up. So I didn't mm-hmm. ever really watch MTV um, or VH1, but I did watch online AMVs a lot through middle school and high school. So that's actually oh, kind yeah. of like some of my favorite songs are because I saw a good AMV and um, mm-hmm. that as, I still enjoy watching them to this day. So, yeah. <laughs> so, in a way, hey. yes, I do. If it's, you know, anime. Unofficially. <laughs> those, those, Unofficial. those would count, too. Those would count, too. I have an unofficial official song coming up uh, as well. So, <laughs> those definitely, definitely count. Uh, Daniel, you're also a big-ass nerd. Yeah. Did you like, when, did you like uh, your music videos? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, were you just more of an MTV or VH1 guy? Um, I never, re- yeah, I have to be more of a MTV guy than a VH1 guy. I didn't really scroll over to, I think, in Yuma, was like Channel 99 if you had cable. So I was always Channel 35 on, you know, cable yeah. there. So I, I know those numbers. I know those numbers. <laughs> I like the behind the stories over. And yeah, over. that was actually pretty cool. And then you get some a great block of uh, music videos. Yeah. No, it was always awesome. Uh, Jess, yep. you had your own batch around of music videos as well? Uh, yeah. Um, I used to watch them before I went to school. I think I would go between MTV and VH1 back when they had like the pretty good music video hours. Mm-hmm. And then we got satellite and I think there was for quite a while, I think it was called MTV hits or something. And it would just play a mm-hmm. ton of music videos. So I'd watch that a lot. Nice. But then of course, thinking of like the songs I liked, I could, like, I'm like, what did I like the most? <laughs> like, I just watched so much. Like they all blended together. Uh, but, and uh, Keith, do you still go about your music videos? Do you like them? Yeah, we had cable pretty much my entire life. That was the one thing our family always spoiled ourselves with, as we always mm-hmm. had every channel basically. Um, so a lot of MTV, a lot of I, I preferred VH1 um, because you know me. I like to gather knowledge. I'm a knowledge gatherer. Yeah. I'm a trivia person. So. The top one or hard rock, hard rock hits of all time, or oh, those are I great. love those behind the music. They always did really cool stuff like that, mm-hmm. and uh, and I liked older music too because my parents really got me into the music they grew up with. So I listened to a lot of that. Um, so VH1, I leaned towards more, but then, and I'm amazed no one else said this. Fuse happened. 
Oh. And oh. Fuse was such a great station for music videos. Oh, I, I forgot about it. that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I listened to a lot of Fuse and MTV2, where it was all music videos for a long time. Yeah, I yeah. that quite a bit. So, um, And I actually have pretty distinct memories of coming home from school and watching Total Request live on MTV mm. because... I knew there would be one rock song. They always had one rock song on the list, you know, just to kind of appease us. And I always wanted to be like, who's it going to be? I know. Is it the Killers? Like, you know, like, and so I have a very distinct memory of that. But um, Hostway knows because we've been doing the show together for a long time. When I listen to music, I listen to it cinematically. I see music videos in my head. I, I come up, you know, I film my own music videos in my head while I'm listening to songs that I haven't seen the video for. So, this is a pretty big thing to me to think about the best music videos. Um, but yeah, um, I, I love music videos, of course. They're great. Yeah. Now let's, <laughs> get, down to sharing. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get down to sharing on which one we're actually going to add. At the pool table, I'm so excited we're, we're going to get a big-ass list out of this. So for my first one, it'll be in kind of in theme of how, of, like what I said about how, how I feel about music videos now. It's like, I don't have that spark where it's like where I get excited for a music video because I I listen to it now basically everything, but I'm I don't really get excited to be like oh on TV I hope to catch this song's music video because it's not really how I watch my music videos anymore unless I'm like on YouTube or it's just shared on my timeline. So for my first one, I'm gonna go with the limousine song, "The Internet Killed the Video Star." Ah, oh, that's a great song. It is a great song, right? I love that song. I haven't and, listened to that in a while. Um, I need to. <laughs> Have you seen the video for it? Yeah, I I have, but I can't like I don't have a vivid memory of it. But I remember watching the video a lot. Well, let me tell you. What was the artist again? The Limousines. The Limousines. Gotcha. Internet killed the video star, and in this one, it's uh, it's, it's these two kids, and they're just it's, it starts in crafts time, and they're like with like uh, paper towel rolls, um, like just the tube and stuff. Just, they're making stuff, and slowly but surely. It's the zombie apocalypse, and except the zombies look fucking dope. They look really good for zombies, um, and you realize the kids are actually making ma- arts and crafts toy guns. <laughs> and there's finally like the break into the house. They get into the car, or they pack their bags. They get into like leather leather jackets. They hop into the car, and they start driving, and pick a spot, hop on ho- hop on top of the car, and they just start shooting at all the zombies and it's like the, the effects are really cool it's like a bunch of confetti shooting out the lasers look really cool it's too many it's too many zombies and just not many guns so what they do also keep in mind this whole time it, it's, it's cut into like the band just like doing that thing singing a song just like just fuck off somewhere but in the story back to the story they're um they realize they can't do it so they start distributing the guns oh no they start dancing right because like the the boy starts like mocking them and he realizes like oh shit the zombies are doing what i'm doing so they start throwing guns at them and they start going like this and they wait until their zombie little trembling fingers do their own magic and mm-hmm. they off themselves. So it's like, oh, yeah. we did it. It is a great music video and it just gets me so hyped for my LARPing because I'm going to go next week. Uh, not to fully LARP, but it'll be more of a reclamation event um, just to just see everybody again. But um, it just it just sparked that thing. So very appropriate also for the timing. The limousines, internet killed the video star. Now, oh wait, so I have to ask. Oh yeah, does it sound like "Video Killed the Radio Star" or is it nothing like it? And they just did the name. No, it's nothing like it, and they just did the name. (laughs) I assume it's just like the one line does sound sound like it though. Like the actual video. Yeah, it does sound a little, but the rest of the song is significantly different. (laughs) It's called an homage. (laughs) Yeah. No, because with Hillsway, it could be an homage, or it could literally they just put the name on there for clout. Who knows? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's it's a great song. It's a great music video too. Okay, now, Liz, are you going to prove Keith right or wrong? It's your turn. What is your first? What is your first entry to the jukebox? So my first entry to the jukebox, I had to go back to my love of, um, you know, like I said, I don't listen to a lot of music, but when I do get into something, um, I, I really hang on to it, I guess, and get really into it. And I really do like, you know, animated music videos. So I had to think like, oh, what are the good ones? You know, and people would, you know, think probably like gorillas, they, they I think are the easiest one that come to mind. Um, yeah. You know, I wanted to be like, what do I really like? I wanted something that's really cool, uh, really like good animation and something that's just really on beat. So I was almost going to go with like uh, Caravan 
play uh, Lone Digger, sorry, by Caravan <laughs> Place. I was going to pick Lone Digger. I don't know. That's, you still can because I no, ended no, up choosing. Okay. Uh, yeah, that one, I ended up, what, what I chose this one over that one is because I just thought the animation was better. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's just, this one I'm is just topic. cool to me. So this one is Pop Stars by KDA. <laughs> and it's a League of Legends music video. Like, it's League of Legends characters. But here's the thing about this one. This came out. This video was so good. It's a, it's a, a. Uh, it's a K-pop band, I guess, that did the, the music, but they do some of it in English, some of it in Korean. It was so good. I actually did download League of Legends and try to play and immediately regretted that decision. <laughs> but I still love the music video. And it is on Spotify, so I, I think uh, per the rules, it gets to be added to the playlist. Yes. And it's really good. You guys should check out the video. It's so visually cool. It's basically like four of the characters from the game, but they're, you know, dressed up in like as korean pop star idols and stuff and the dancing is cool the animation is cool there's like such cool things they do that i honestly wish it was like a real band and i could just like i think they've done other um songs since but this one is always my favorite one and it's always one that i love to just like like you don't even have to give a crap about league of legends you can just put it on and watch it and it's like oh that's a cool video like if you didn't if i didn't know it was league of legends i would not have even guessed that's how far removed it is from the game so it makes you wish that the the whole fan base wasn't as toxic. Uh, yeah, oh. or the game was fun. You know, that too. So, <laughs> so it was KDA, the song called Pop yeah, Stars. So K slash, K slash forward slash D-A. Okay. D-A. Yep. And then the song is pop forward slash stars. And it's really dope. And you should, uh, if you're going to listen to it, make sure you give the video a watch. Because the video to me is what elevates that song and makes it like, so like stick in the memory, I guess. Right. And it's like, yeah, that's, the, that's the point of this episode. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually my other thing too. I tried to think of music that the music video actually added and elevated the song versus mm-hmm. like, if you just mm-hmm. listen to the song on its own. So yeah. that is the one I went with because the animation is top tier. The song is top tier. It's just a really fun song. So that's my, right. my pick. Man, I'm so excited. I was fucking sweating it. Keith made me <laughs> super nervous. Like, the whole last iteration, uh, the last time we did this episode, I had a whole animal theme, and Low Digger was like one, one of my songs. I was like, do I want to repeat it? Yeah, Low Digger is music great. Video. It's a great fucking video and a great song. Like, we haven't done that genre into the jukebox, so it'll probably come back around. I would so. love if you do Electric Swing. Good. I love yeah. Electric Swing. Actually, my husband, that's what he loves to listen to as well. Oh, that nice. and um, our our new favorite of genre is also Bardcore. I think it's really only on YouTube where it's like <laughs> medieval covers of pop songs uh, or famous oh, songs. Yeah. Yeah. So if oh. you ever do a uh, playlist of those, we, we, we got you. <laughs> Excellent. Now, Daniel, what is your first pick? I don't know. I feel like this is going to come, you know, out of left field. But I'm happy to, you know, go ahead and say it. Um, and just because of the music video is so iconic and the song is so catchy, but it here it goes again by OK Go. <laughs> just because the That's music video is so great because of just how they're all coordinated and they choreographed around treadmills and treadmills terrify me, especially if they go really fast. So I don't know how that is able- not as. Right, that is not as easy as it looks. Right, yeah. exactly. Oh, no. And, and it saved their band, too. They were, like, going out, and then they pulled that. Really? Like, save money, pulled yeah. that music video. Oh, yeah. yeah, actually, OK Go, it's not that song. I do have an OK Go song on my list. Thank I hope you. I can still say, because it's by <laughs> far my favorite music video. Um, but, yeah, they were, like, going out, losing popularity, and they pulled that music video. They were just like, let's do something super creative. And they did, and boom, now they bam, and now everybody knows when an OK Go music video comes out. Yeah, and, you know, having a bad day just because it's so cheery and so poppy, you know, always gets you in a good mood, pumping and going. So, yeah, I had to throw that one in there. Always stuck in my head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, The same thing with Jess. You you picked the right band, you picked the wrong song. (laughs) (laughs) I know, we might not have the same one, because they have, like, I was debating which one is my favorite, but this one is definitely my favorite, so. Yeah, even when we were coming up with ideas, it's like, I think somebody has to have an OK Go song. Otherwise, like, (laughs) best music video, you know? Yeah, they're on my. If no one else picks it, I have to put them on it on the list. List. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, they definitely knocked out. And that's that's why we didn't really, uh, I didn't really um, highlight was just like you only got like about two minutes to maybe up to maybe six minutes of just 
footage to just like make a dope something out of it. Yeah. And they came out around, around, around like the internet time where it's like, if you, were, if you throw out something creative onto YouTube, it's going to fucking stick. And just like, it really just like yeah. poof, skyrocketed them again. So that was really cool. Yeah. So Jess, what is your mm-hmm. first one? You know, I'm going to go ahead and just say what the OK Go song is. <laughs> okay. Um, and this the reason why this one's my favorite is because I have this version of the song over the normal studio version of it because Ooh, I loved it in the music song. video so much. So the song is Needing Getting by OK Go. And it's just it's them in a car and making music out of a car through going through these like constructs of like having like a baseball bat hit a drum as they drive by at a certain amount of speed and then a little thing off the tire hits little chimes to make the song like you just have to watch it to hear and it just sounds amazing it starts with them making beats with like just slamming the doors and it's just it's gorgeous and it's perfectly timed they even have electric guitar solo in it with like something just hitting a bunch of like, like destroying electric guitars going oh i love it i love that version of it so much i listen to that version over the regular studio version and and it's also just a solid song as well needing and getting it's like one of those pop songs that's actually kind of about something sad so Mm -hmm. like you feel good and kind of mellow as you listen to it and kind of like sad once you hear that last verse and you're like oh like life but i just i thought that's the coolest one they have a bunch of awesome music videos i love okay go but that one's by far my favorite nice the literal everything you just said th- that was my song too by the way I figured. everything you said is my exact same opinion i think the yep. video version is better than the real version but i do like the real version uh i think the video is cool i think it's also their best set of lyrics oh yeah written. like the last uh the last bit where they're backing up the car and there's nothing hit, getting hit mm-hmm. and the Ain't, ain't much that dumber that's dumber than trying to forget a girl when you love her oh oh I and he so hits much. it so good in the music video oh, i'm like you- oh Love it. So good. But yeah, OK Go is amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. Now, for the hat trick, uh, Keith, are you going to do another OK Go song? No, that was my OK Go, Go. Okay, okay, God, Go okay. song, so I'm happy. <laughs> um, I'm going to put the worst song on this playlist right now. Let's do it. I was supposed to be worried uh, about Liz, and you already just... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like this song. OK. Maybe. I think Liz would like this song. I don't know if anyone else really has a strong opinion on this song, but... The song is Rock DJ by Robbie Williams. Um, Robbie Williams is a British uh, pop star, and the video is incredible. He um, <laughs> He's an attractive man. Uh, he drops into like what looks to be a roller disco with a bunch of attractive women skating around him, and he's like, hey, like showing off, and the girls are just ignoring him. And he just starts pulling his clothes off and doing a strip tease, and the girls are completely ignoring him. And he's just like, what the hell? They should be looking at me, you know? And, and then he gets completely naked at the end or near the end. And they're not looking at him. He's like, what? And then he starts, and this is where it takes the turn that I think Josue will love this video. He starts ripping his skin off. <gasps> Ooh, okay. And then the girls start paying attention to him like he's sexy now. And so he ends up basically ripping his entire, like all his skin and muscles off. And there's a moment where his skin's all off. He reaches back like a stripper would when they like pull tearaway pants off. And he grabs his butt and pulls his butt cheeks off. And it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in a music video. I love this song. It's cheesy. It's stupid. It's not good. But I love it. So I literally am just DJ imagining those dancing we'll watch skeletons. It. We'll watch it after we record this show. I'll show you. <laughs> <At the laughs> it's, like a, it's like a reverse uh, coffin bound. Yeah. you'll. You, I, honestly, I'll say I think you'll love it. I don't think you'll like the song very much. But okay. I think love the video. Because so. it turns really grim. It's great. So. Yeah, Rock DJ by Rob Williams. Robbie, Robbie Williams, not Robin Williams. For <laughs> <laughs> All right, for my next one, such a great turn uh, for my next pick. Uh, this is my unofficial official uh, music video. There is an official video to this song, and my song is Wait and Bleed by Slipknot. <laughs> There's an official video of them being like, it's like the, the live performance, a bunch of different cuts of them being live back in the early days. Cool, 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 whatever. Boring, whatever. The cool version of the song that came out, and it was even like in a in a DVD set uh, in Disaster Pieces, and then another one, just because it was such a fun one, and it also it also featured the Terry Date mix on it, not the original track. I think that might have been why. But this video was still like in the early days of YouTube, so it's kind of like who fucking made this shit? If you've never seen like the clay animation video of Wait and Bleed, 
it is the coolest fucking thing. I want a little plushy version of all the band members because they all look so fucking adorable in that little in their own like clay animation. It's just a guy. It starts with a guy just like chopping down a tree, takes it to his to his place, and of course, one of the band members was, was in the was in the log. And then he gets, uh, I think it's Corey who gets up into the shenanigans and starts releasing all the other band members who are being kept captive by the guy. And they all just kind of like work around and start doing creepy shit around him to just inevitably kill the guy. And there's a really cool shot of him kind of before he fades out of them all like over his face. And I would just like love that shot, like in a good, in a cool poster um, or just, or just something else I'm just thinking about too now. Now that I have to just write the shit down before I forget. Anyway, but that music video is really, really cool. I just love that it was done because Clanimation is so creepy. Add Slipknot onto it. And on their top five best songs, Win and Bleed. So, yes, that is my number to pick. Liz, back to you. Okay, this is going to be the one that I struggled the most with because I mm. really knew my first and my last picks. But I, I, I wanted to do one that was really about dancing. And I'm like, you know, Okay, well, I guess Michael Jackson is banned because obviously Thriller, like, is the one that I think, you know, if you're going to do best music video, like, with the dancing, nice. I mean, I don't know how you cannot say Thriller. Um, so I was like, oh, don't go Lady Gaga. Do I do, like, you know, uh, there's, like, so many other, there's there's other ones that I looked at. And I was looking at it and I was like, but I don't really listen to any of the this music. Besides, like, Lady Gaga, yes. But, like, all the other ones, I looked at so many plays of, like, the best dancing, epic dancing music videos. They were okay. And also, oh, I don't no. really listen to them. So it wasn't super authentic. So what I ended up going with was um, Downtown by Macklemore. <laughs> Mm-hmm. because amazing video it's a good it's video. an amazing video exactly like that video okay so you know when you think back bar you're like oh thrift shop okay. thrift shop's good right okay. but <laughs> downtown have you seen the video Josue? before you no okay i mean i might have like one. once but Me? like it's blur this is a perfect example of i feel like the video elevates the song because it's okay. kind of a joke song and then you watch the video and it's like it just really builds and it gets really fun. And the lip sync is super mm-hmm. on point. And there is some pretty good dancing. Like, actually, like, I feel like the whole video is Macklemore going in to buy a moped. And the best part about it is that he begins alone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he begins alone. And then everybody from each scene just keeps following and, like, building into this, basically, this mm. massive carnival parade at the end where, like, everybody in the music video is in there and dancing. And it's really cool. It's honestly really funny. It's got some of my favorite lines. Um, one of them is, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. It's like, somebody's like, he's yelling at him for speeding and he's like, yo man, I'm doing 45. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, downtown is like one of, I, I, I'd like a lot of Malcolm Moore stuff. Um, actually I like three songs from Malcolm Moore. But downtown, I think, is just one of those ones that always like makes me smile. And when I watch the video, I'm all like, "Yeah, it's really, it's really cute. It's funny. It's not as like you know feel goody as he does like um, can't stop us or whatever. And it's not as funny or jokey and goofy as thrift shop. It's kind of in that middle where it's still a good song, and um, but it's still kind of funny. So yeah, downtown. I, I should have <laughs> warned alley. you that I'm the. I'm the, I'm the resident Macklemore defender on this podcast. There's a lot of hate from Macklemore on this podcast. I know. I felt like, yeah, going from Thriller to, like, Beyonce, Lady Gaga to Macklemore as, you know, a fun dance video. But, hey, what can I, I love, say? I love Macklemore, but... It's a fun one. You should watch it, Osea, and then and then tell me oh, no, if, we, if you still hate it. <laughs> after all after all this and the next recording, I'm, I'm going to hop on a stream and then to work on the playlist and then... We're gonna watch the videos on stream. Yeah, because well, you have YouTube Music, so we could actually do a playlist of the videos. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. That would be cool. A special one. Oh, yeah, no. I'm already ready to brew. I uh, go over on it. I already know he's not uh, gonna like my third pick, so we'll just move on. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, there's still gonna be other like 12 songs in between, so it'll, it'll be okay. So, Daniel, <laughs> what is your number two? My number two, just because it's uh, straight up nightmare fuel, I'm going with uh, Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. Because it's so trippy, and I absolutely love the song. I didn't know what the hell I was watching. I think I was watching like MTV Hits or something like that when they did, you know, their throwbacks, and that came on. I was like, "This song is awesome!" 
I like the guitar, but what the hell is going on in the music video? <laughs> I just remember the mom's face like always warping and freaking out, but mm. such a great song. And yeah, the music video is just trippy. Do not watch this on any uh, psychedelics. Lost into you children because uh, yeah, you will not have a good time. <laughs> okay. And Jess, you're number two. Um, so I wanted to choose like a cinematic one where it's like almost like some music videos are like mini movies that make you feel so much more with the song. Um, so I ended up choosing as my number one for that style. Um, Ghost of You by My Chemical Romance. Oh, man. Because it made me cry so much watching the music video. And um, so that music video is about you know, my chemical romance band is it's during world war two and they're performing at like kind of like a USO type show, but like before yeah. you go to war, like your girlfriends and wives are there and they're all dancing together. And then it has cuts to D day from world war two, which I was, I rewatched it and it was amazingly how like some small details they had in there. Like they had the plastic over the guns and the boats so that the water, I was like, that's a, cool detail to put in a random music video because it's like yes they had to do that and movies forget that so um i just i i just i love that music video it's so sad one of the bandmates ends up getting shot and it's just uh, i love my chemical romance like i am that i I still am i still listen to them like once a month like so you have to how else do you cleanse I know, <laughs> but um, but but yeah, that's just it's just I love World War Two too. So it was like just this like one of my favorites of their songs, and like just an amazing music video. Oh hell yeah! All right, so I I I I, I have to shout it out. You, you definitely need to listen to the Ghost of You live a live version uh when they're in the House of Blues, and the only thumbnail is like this Gerard with like his red hair. Uh huh. They they slow it down just a bit, and they take out Ooh. something in the chorus, but just to suspend you. And then, oh my God, it's just like, it's literally the best version of Ghost of You. Okay. Uh, is, that, is that live version? Okay, it's, I'm going to find it. Just look for his like red hair thumbnail. And it's, it's that one because there's probably so many of them. <laughs> uh, so, and Keith, your second pick. Okay, I'm going to go with um, this is going to be like, this one's for me. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to pick a Foo Fighters song. Yes. Because. As I am wont to do, I pick. I, I, I knew you would. That's why I didn't want. I was like, "Yeah, I'm not going to dip over there." I wasn't going to actually, but I love their videos. The okay, go got mm-hmm. on the playlist, so I'm like, mm-hmm. "Cool." So I started looking at my backups. I'm not picking one of the ones that most people would pick. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna so pick it's not going to be like "Learn to Fly" or anything like that. Yeah, it's actually "Learn to Fly." Isn't it? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Wait, no, no, that's wait. on my that backup like list. One- the, okay yeah here's the thing because most people i never hear people talk about that video people talk about everlong my hero you know and all the new ones but i never hear people talk about learn to fly, no, learn that, to fly honestly that was written on my uh, little chicken scratch list <laughs> <laughs> nice so i have a reason for this and hosway i've told you this story before but no one else has heard it i don't think um growing up i was a massive nirvana fan i, I associated really closely to kirk Cobain and you know his whole tragic ending and everything and um I love Foo Fighters from the moment they started because, you know, Dave came from Nirvana and I was like, I'm going to love this. And I just loved everything Foo Fighters put out. And then when this video came out, if you remember, it's like a funny video or it's like a story about they're on a plane and they're all in these different wacky costumes and stuff. And it's very funny. But there's a part where he uh, it cuts to concert footage and he like jumps into the crowd and he's crowd surfing while singing. And for some reason, when he was singing at that moment, teenage keith started crying <laughs> because he was like i i was like kurt would be so proud of him right now and that was the first time that hit me mm. and i just started crying my eyes out oh, like, nice. and so that video always has like a really like special as goofy and dumb as it is it has a really special part for me <laughs> shout out to and teenage it me like, cameos it's yeah exactly and it took me like 10 watches to realize that um he had the mic stand out and he was spinning it like a, a plane propeller. Oh, like, no that, shit. You see it go past the camera. It's, it's too zoomed in to really see what he's doing, but I realized what that was. But um, And I'll give a honorable mention to um, Low by Foo Fighters, which is an underrated video and is literally one of the funniest videos I've ever seen. It's Jack Black and um, Dave Grohl. They're both um, truckers 
They show up to a roadside hotel and they're like, we're going to have a good night. And they go into this hotel room and the video is just them having the weirdest fucking night you'll ever see. <laughs> they, they get drunk. They're, they're dressing in drag. They're doing all these crazy things to each other. And then the next day they just come out dressed and they just nod and walk off like <laughs> never happened. It's great video and no one really knows about the one. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Learn to fly by the Foo Fighters. Thanks, nice. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Entering a last round. So for my last one, I love this video so fucking much, only because it's 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 such a long song, and they they did it, they fucking did it. Back when thirteen little little, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell my story on this one. I, I didn't cry. I'm just wearing my eye right now. Uh, but my thirteen year old self, angsty self version, two thousand four, had his first concept album his own concept album there was some that he knew of or at least like he heard of they didn't know what the concept album was but this was his own gem and everybody slowly started hating on it and it had to be his own little hidden gem until i finally said fuck y'all it's a great album jesus of suburbia by green day has a great fucking story behind i mean it, it just literally tells the story of the jesus of suburbia and just them saying like fuck off to everything and how shitty it is on like <laughs> living in that in that suburbia and how just being super angsty and broody and like and then going off into holiday uh, boulevard broken dreams saint jimmy Dude, that extraordinary girl that, yeah i fucking love that album that album is so good yeah no no people can suck it, it just because it made money doesn't mean it's bad what's like, your name Jesus. oh god <laughs> like, what's your name is like that one of my favorite album closers oh god yeah. damn do i love that song i mean it became a broadway musical yeah yeah that's how good that album was <laughs> like <laughs> so yeah but yeah, no, jesus suburbia love that I actually told the whole song like the whole thing uh all five mini songs into like uh, into like the one song um it's one like i would love to karaoke but it's such a long fucking song i know i'd be a my hug it would just have to be one of those like private rooms with friends or if there's such a dead fucking night and it's like all right nobody's gonna fucking care i can do this one so jesus suburbia green day liz your last pick I feel a little bad now, but why? What is it? Tell me. Share. I'm so excited. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do I think it, I know what it. it is. I know, do it, right? Because we kind of talked it. about it. You sure? All do right. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with Rockstar by Nickelback. <laughs> why? <laughs> because it's a good song. Okay. First of all, and second of all, it's a fun video. Like it's got so many different people in it. It's like one. It's okay. Here's the thing about that I like about it. So you know, it's like high school or whatever. And Nickelback's. It's still. It's a joke. It's how they come out. And then um, they come out with this song, and it's like, damn, this is pretty good. What is this? This is Nickelback. And like, I don't know. It's like it's fun. And then the video is kind of making fun of the whole thing. And I just really like that. I like artists that don't take themselves too seriously like Nickelback is a, a band that I feel like they get shit on so much and they've never been shitty about it they've always been just kind of like it's cool if we're not for you you know like we're gonna yeah. keep doing our thing and I like that this song is just kind of making like a little bit of fun of that whole of themselves basically and the people that they work with so yeah in defense of Liz mm -hmm. that's my favorite Nickelback song easily that's right. You, that you did throw out that song last time for. Yeah, I did put it on the. So now you don't get to use it. So great, great, great. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Also, we have to move on. Also, there's a sea shanty version of this song. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link it. It's on Spotify too. I almost did that, but they didn't have a music video. Um, but yeah, I would say I'll say before you before you completely hate, listen listen to the sea shanty version because no. It's it's good. It's good. What is, I thought this is a music podcast. <laughs> I was supposed to get on stream later to, to listen to these with the crowd, and now I have to listen to Rockstar too. It's like yeah. Okay, well, deal of you can listen honestly, to I the. Didn't, I didn't think that's what Liz was going to pick, so I'm very <laughs> excited to hear her honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> what anything else could have been? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, thank you, Liz. All right. And <laughs> I Daniel. stand alone and I don't regret it. <laughs> I stand with you. <laughs> Daniel, your last pick. Uh, my last pick. Okay. Um, I am going with this is actually my uh, second favorite song off of the album, but I just prefer this music video. It is uh, Something About Us by Daft Punk. Mm. Mm. 
Did nice. Daft Punk. That yeah. was also yeah, I love their videos too. <laughs> <laughs> I was considering a Daft Punk song too. Oh, which one? Honestly. Um well, I guess this is one of the last rounds. Um it, uh back in the Julian Casablanca song. Oh, uh the one where it, with the mannequins. With the mannequins, oh. yeah. Oh, that is a good song. And a good Instant Crush. Yeah, Instant, Instant Crush. Crush. Instant Crush. Yes. Love the song. Love the love, love the video so much. Okay, but yeah, something about us. Is this, is it the, the bit about on the Interstellar 555? Uh, yes. It's on okay, Discovery. Cool. That's what the yeah, album's yeah. called. The movie's Interstellar 555. So okay, cool, cool. for those of you that don't know, uh, the single, even though it's an entire animated movie, the singles were released separately, so you had to actually buy the entire DVD if you want to watch the entire movie, but that was, uh, I think, their second or third single off that movie. But yeah, that's uh, my second favorite song. But I just love the music video to that one. So it has to go on there. Cool, cool, cool. And Jess, your next and last pick. Um, So this one I picked because I kind of wanted a, I guess, avant-garde animated kind of one. Um, I also love this song because it's one of those songs that sounds sweet, but if you actually listen to lyrics, it's actually really depressing. Um, Little Talks by Of Monsters and Men. Um, The music video is sort of, it's like half animated, half, I don't even know how to describe it because like the human faces are their faces, but it's like this group of men run into what I assume is a beautiful goddess and she's the only thing in color. And they go on this journey together where they face a bunch of monsters and a bunch of, like, they get attacked by, like, flying firebirds and stuff like that. But the goddess lady protects them. And they get her to, at the end, this, like, huge, basically buffalo god with wings of rainbow, like, not even rainbow, like, fluorescent, just gorgeous golden feathers, huge horns and, like, six eyes. And the little goddess, like, just kind of goes to sit right in between her horns like that's her home and it's just it's just it's cool and it's fun and the song is it's a duet song of a woman talking to her dead husband in her empty house and the oh. internet actually like it was in my head and i had this on my list like really early on because the week that you asked me to be on this podcast um tiktok had discovered that the lyrics were depressing so it was like all over TikTok for a bit. Like if you ever actually listen to this, like this is sad. She's talking to her dead husband. Like she's hearing his voice. Like he's not there. I'm like, oh. Yeah. But but yeah, great music video. I think their other they had another one that's kind of the same style too. I can't remember what that song's called. Dirty like, Paws. Yeah, Dirty Paws. Yeah. Which I love that song too. But I just little talks is in my head a bit more when it comes to music videos. The animation style, um, if you haven't seen the video, um, I talked about the video for Tonight Tonight by the Smashing Pumpkins. It's kind of similar to that, uh-huh. but done in a more modern like technology, so it looks a lot better, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's very similar to that if you've seen that video. Huh. It's really great. Yeah. Nice. And Keith, how are we going to close off the jukebox this episode? I don't know. <laughs> um, oh. I'm torn, so... I have a song that has to be on the playlist for this purpose. I know. I think I know what you're talk- talking about. But I have a song that I want to put on the playlist. Yeah. I'm going to go with what I believe I want to put on there. I'm, okay. If, yeah. If someone else can pick it next time. So I'll go with my honorable mentions, as I always do. Um, I almost went with the Linkin Park song. Ooh, nice. Um, Which one? Uh, oh, my God. Breaking the Habit? My, Breaking the Habit? No, I do love... That's my favorite Linkin Park song, by the way. Breaking. The one more light? Um no, it's Bleed from, it from out. reanimation. It's from reanimation. Reanimation. Uh, High voltage. No, it's the one that's where they're all heads My... and there's robots fighting and shit. One step closer <gasps> remix. I think it was the one step closer remix. I, my mind went completely. Oh, that's right. The reanimation did have its own music videos again. Uh, point of authority. Point of authority. It was points of authority. Yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so I was gonna pick that. Uh, I love the video, but I I don't think the animation aged particularly well. I wouldn't uh, want to watch it. No. <laughs> uh, it was so cool at the time. Um, 2002 animation. I really wanted to put corn on the playlist for some reason in this spot. And I wanted to put um, Twisted Transistor because it's hilarious. Mm. Oh, yes. The swaps. It's a bunch of rappers playing them. And it has my favorite line, which I think it was Snoop Dogg, where the, guy, where the record executive is telling him to say something about booty. He's like, this song ain't about booty. It's about transistors. <laughs> it's just 
<laughs> just like my favorite. Um, I thought about that. Um, there's so many out there. Um, every Weezer video was considered. <laughs> of course. Every single of course. One of them, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to be too much of a cliche. Um, and the one that I think should be on this playlist that no one said, and this would have been me just putting it because T Dog's not here to put it on there. Uh, Virtual Insanity by Yeah, Spotify. that's the one I need. Like, like, it's the best music video ever made. Right? <laughs> like, probably. <laughs> so, um, but no, I'm going to go with my what I personally want. And I'm going to go with The Prodigy. And I'm going to go with Breathe. Not Smack My Bitch Up. <laughs> okay. I think Breathe is a better video. And um, there's going to be more instances to put Smack My Bitch Up on the, on the playlist later on. So um, I love that video. It always creeped me out when I was younger. And it, it really features the, um, the second vocalist of the prodigy quite a bit and he's got this really crazy makeup where he's got his his eyes whited out with contacts and he's got like tiger stripes and he looks feral it's really really dope so yeah it's a really simple video it's probably the simplest video of this entire list to be honest with you but um i love it so breathe by the prodigy fuck yeah uh going backwards uh jess did you have any honorable mentions um buddy holly by wheezy weezer wheezy Mm with weezer because it's just it's great they have amazing music videos um my dad's on my list and he added on i don't think it counts as a music video because it's in a movie technically but mother by pink floyd um Mm. it's like more of a snippet of their pink floyd the wall movie but Mm -hmm. um and i I think i think everybody else either mentioned ones that i would have said or (laughs) that's pretty much it oh um eminem um without me was probably the first Eminem That's song I had ever heard <laughs> yeah. on like MTV or something, and I be- like that was my start of just my love for Eminem when I was in middle school. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I actually just gave me an idea for the future of the show. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, honorable mentions. Honorable mentions: uh, Lost Boys by Sixty Nine Eyes uh, because Ooh, it's uh, nice. an entire recreation and. In- three and a half minutes of the 69 eyes uh just because it's so bizarre uh she wants to move by nerd spaceship <laughs> not good special effects but you know so good uh, i did mention it earlier bleed it out lincoln park because the mm. whole bar fight started in reverse yeah. uh breaking the habit because it was an anime music video but not really an anime music video still a really good music video mm-hmm. uh, another one because it's really bizarre and it's really catchy and i still love this song and occasionally if i get drunk enough we'll do it at karaoke uh, I believe in a thing called love by the darkness. Um, <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, that's a good one. Um, gonna my last one is uh, one by Metallica, just due to ooh capturing yeah, his gun. Yeah, capturing everything from the movie, uh, recreating the book, um, mm-hmm. and then the added dialogue. Like if I had arms, you know, I could just you know take this instrument and just kill myself right now. So yeah, that's uh, the last one. No, one is a heavy is a heavy uh, video too, just because like I, I like that they actually referenced the movie book. And uh, Liz, honorable mentions. Okay, um, I'm gonna do my honorable mentions and my backup. I have "Blood in the Water" by Grandson. Um, that one is I really like Grandson. If you haven't listened to them, they're kind of like a ro- they're a rock band, I guess, but they go really hard. So, and they're very very political. It's kind of like. Um, Rage Against the Machine, I guess, is kind of what I would mm-hmm. compare them to. So uh, yeah. Blood in the Water is really good. Um, I really like that song. Uh, my favorite song of them is probably called Thoughts and Prayers because it's about the school shootings. And like literally the chorus is like, no thoughts, no prayers will bring back what is no longer there or something is like the chorus so it's Jesus. just like i know yeah blood in the water is a little bit lighter um thoughts and prayers doesn't have a music video though so i couldn't nominate that one but blood in the water is just as good that one's great because it's basically like kind of talking to the one percent and it's like um what are you going to do when there's blood in the water the price of your greed is your sons and your daughters but it's a good song like i'm not i'm just mm. reading it so it's like mm. it's a fun song it's a little bit on the nose because it's kind of i feel like a low budget or maybe like a lower budget. They're like an indie band. So a little bit of a lower budget music video, but it's worth a watch and it's worth a listen. I, I, I enjoy grandson very much. So yeah. Nice. Kids Wait, just is like, that it? Oh, well, I have others, but I mean, yeah. Okay. 
no, because you made me watch this music video when we had this conversation, so we're going to talk about it. You're going to own up. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them about your obsession with Korean music. Ah, uh, Sai. Yeah, so, <laughs> Sai. I really wanted to do Sai, but, but Keith kind of talked me out of it. I guess that's why it's not a fan. Uh, it's a show. No, I didn't say that. I was like, so, no. I didn't thought Nickelback that. would be less offensive, but now I'm like, maybe I should have just gone with Sai. So, no, no. She didn't pick Gangnam Style. Yeah, I didn't know. No, because no, no, no. <laughs> no, like, okay, I get it. was when I was thinking for like really cool dance videos. And, you know, Gangnam Style is good. Okay, like that's a good video. It's a good song. It's funny. Um, but if I have to say my favorite Psy music video, it's Daddy, where it's literally, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen it? It's horrifying. <laughs> yes. Yes. I would have taken that over Nickelback. <laughs> too bad. Um, I know. I know it's too bad. Nickel, just give it a give it a shot and give the sea shanty version a shot, man. Just don't be a, don't be a hater. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. no. if, if, we're, if we're all throwing the, if, we're, if we're all saying our truths here, I, no, like eleven, twelve year old me had uh, Silver Side Up and the fucking Long Road Home albums of Nickelback. Oh. So I was my fair share of, of Nickelback band, but then being like, wow. yeah, this shit fucking sucks. <laughs> like, I wouldn't so, say it no. sucks. Okay, well, respect. All right. Daddy's oh, no, great video, music yeah. video, though, because it's Psy playing three different versions. The uh, young ver- he's playing his kid, himself, and his father. And basically, the whole song is just how they're, he's hot, and he um, has a lot of like swagger and pull with the ladies, and he gets it from his daddy. But the dancing in that video is really fun. It's a really fun video. And the dance is hard. as hell. Like, so much respect to Psy for pulling off those dance moves, because, like... Yeah, it's it's pretty impressive, and he gets the whole group behind him, and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, Sai so Sai so would also be uh, Daddy's also my second honorable mention there. The little kid version of Sai haunts me. I know, it's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> funny. The scariest thing ever. That's why we need to bring it up. I'm like, you put me through this for no reason. <laughs> so yeah, those those two are those two are good. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned that I was like in a fan until I discovered talent. <laughs> okay. Jeez, okay. Ouch. Dude. I, I said I said at one point they were appreciated. That's, what if that's what I'm back trying to listens say. to the show and they just I hope they do. They got to plug this shit in my show. I love like, it. Damn. <laughs> no, honestly, they're so nice. I think they would just be like, oh, that's cool, man. You know, it's not yeah, for well, you. Well, yeah, they're Canadians, so. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Hey, yeah, I, I, gave, I gave two of their albums a shout out, and it's not from like the song that you picked. It's like you could have picked from those, but I could have been like, okay, I have some some fond memories of those. But no, we're listening to Rockstar. Yeah. But cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, and the video is fun too. But yeah, I was actually going to look. I wanted to make a joke like the best thing Nickelback's done is not produce music, but I actually don't know if they've been producing music lately. I would have taken a photograph to... because of the meme. No, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't want to think about Nickelback songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Too bad. I, I honestly wanted to do um, Saving You. Is that the one? Because I actually do like that video a bit more. <laughs> but I just thought it looked like I was going to throw up. <laughs> yeah, oh my god exactly i was like all right i'll pick something that's like palatable to be like, at least you didn't say the you know spider-man 2 one by nickelback the hero uh, it's spider-man yeah. 1 and it's hero and how fucking dare you that's and a it's, gem it's by oh wow oh, okay okay wow wow okay i'm sorry <laughs> i like hero that it's a gem and i will hear no slander over that song i like how we really? are like there's so many nickelback yeah songs fucking really <laughs> also um Liz also teased me that she was going to put the Screaming Cowboys song on the playlist. Yes! Oh my, oh my god! I know, right? That the, music the video is funny! In the sky. I mean, it's... Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the song now. Hold on. Let me just, Give yeah, me a second. Fine. Yeah, I, I'm oh, hoping people actually kind of get down and listen to the, play, the actual physical Take playlist. Enough. So they're going to go screaming. Have you... Okay, sorry. Jessica, Daniel, have you guys seen the Big Enough music video? You've probably seen the gifs or the meme of it. Okay, it's know. like some Australian know. band, I think, and they're just, it's like this techno country song, I guess. It's like what I would describe it as. And um, during the bridge, it's literally this old man dressed like as a cowboy, just superimposed across the sky. And he's just like, ah! yeah. <laughs> like yep. I've seen the meme. Seen, yeah. yes, or the gift for the meme, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's that song. But the song itself is not bad. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cute. I liked it. But Keith, uh, again... <laughs> Like, was like I, I don't. I don't think that's streaming anywhere. Yeah, uh, I, I still would have taken Daddy. Out, out of all those, I would have taken Daddy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Please go to your. <laughs> okay. Right. Cool. Anyways, go ahead. With that, 
close us off that page of the jukebox. Uh, before we move forward, I have to give a special highlight to something that I went to this week. Uh, something that hasn't really been talked about in this show since the inception of this show because of the pandemic. And I went to my first live show, and I just need to throw some words out there o- over this. I went to go see Mannequin Pussy and Pink Shift, and let me tell you that the, it was just like the one thing that was literally missing in my life. Like, obviously, it's been a shit a, a, a shit pandemic for everyone. What I didn't know is that there was like this void in myself, this like dead feeling that I just it just became a, a normal uh, after over a year of this. And as I'm in the front waiting for Pink Shift to tur- to start playing, to start coming out, and the bassist hop- hops on his, plugs it in. And being so close to the monitor, getting the feedback back, revert like just bouncing, bouncing back, uh, vibrating off of me. That spark ignited, where it's just like I remember something from like back then. Like I needed that so much, and like right after that, the guitarist gets on his, and it's like that those finger scratches, like that ugly finger scratching, as like they're trying to like just like like figure it out or tune. I forgot how much I fucking needed that too. Just like that noise that just like that noise. that just like, like like it's picked up from monitors and gets bounced off to you at such incredible volumes. Oh, I was not ready for like for the emotions that were coming up after that. Pink shift did a great job. Again, ha- like shout out to their EP Saccharin. Great, great punk pop, uh, pop, pop punk uh, album. And it was actually the first time touring. So it was like literally the first time being on the West coast as they're from Baltimore. Uh, so and they just had a, an incredible performance mm-hmm. and then mannequin pussy was next who i went to like the whole reason why i was there i exploded like starting with romantic going into control with one of the new ones and then with literally the song that is first on this jukebox who you are played next and everything just came pouring out like thank god we had masks i could like mask some of most like 50 percent of my face but man was i just everything that i could just like muster up was just like being thrown back at missy at bear the rest of the band uh it was just exactly what i needed uh fuck they went on for like 20 songs uh, i think because like both bands had to make up time because angel does should have been with them but they had to cut out uh during the tour and at the end <laughs> fucking a like I, fuck I just want to talk about every single song. I made a playlist for, for for the whole show. Why? Because at the end, after In Love Again, which is a great, great song from Mannequin Pussy, they fin- they actually finished off with Pigs is Pigs. Misty, Misty gets on the bass, and Bear gets on the mic, and Bear, if you've heard the song Pigs is Pigs, it's a very fucking powerful song. And the whole fucking thing just fucking, the whole roof just blows up. It's fucking awesome. At the end, Bear just gra- sees his set list, crumbles it up, throws it in the air, it goes away from me, but it's paper. It gets a, a different wind, and it comes back down on stage. And my hand is already hungry, hungry hippo style. Smacks that, that paper down, and it is my set list. And which is why I was to make the playlist again. Uh, but uh, the whole thing was just incredible. I'm glad that literally everybody was wearing masks, so, so at least like to some degree it was safe. Um, I still plan to go get tested just to be sure I am okay. But man, to just be there for that, it was just. Again, something that I didn't know. I knew I wanted to go to shows. I knew I fucking missed being at, at live shows, um, but I didn't know how much how much was it was actually needed. Just like for, literally for my own fucking psyche, uh, just being around other people just to appreciate just like loud music like that. And speaking of last shout outs too, uh, today we are still recording on September the thirtieth. Happy birthday to my mother, who without her, her taste in music like being blessed down onto me. God, if it wasn't for her, I don't know what kind of shit music I'd be listening to. And I so love who I am today because of everything that she just casted down on me. All the, all that rock and espanol from like in the nineties was just important to me. And also on the same day, my cousin, Emmanuel Meño for taking me to literally inviting me to all the tocadas in San Luis, Mexico and being at those like literal like ska and punk shows in Mexico with that fucking crowd, getting to know all like that community of those punks in San Luis, Mexico, and just appreciating fucking music, ska music. I, the, one of my favorite fucking memories uh, of going to those shows in, in San Luis was a band's playing. They do their two songs 
and then they all get up and they rotate instruments because it's like they kind of know the song better in that way because they they still all know their instruments and to just to be that talented and to get that slight different vibe because everybody is now in their own different setting it was just awesome so shout out and happy birthday to my mom and my cousin emmanuel um i love y'all both so so fucking much i can't wait to see y'all so that was it for my last rant um uh yeah i love y'all and thank you guys for all being here as well so we get to move on to new releases um uh keith what do you see on your end that's already out okay we'll make it quick uh, because i don't have a lot Uh, i got a meek mill album that just came out because a lot of things just released as we're sitting here uh lil wayne and rich the kid i got the tony bennett lady gaga album i got brandy carlisle um ministry has a new album out today uh jojo asking alexandria wow i never thought i'd say that name again <laughs> uh and i think that's it i see for this week uh as far as next week goes uh, i'm pulling up that list now uh james we have a oh the bieber album comes out next week oh that's gonna be hilarious um porches atmosphere trivium oh finally word yeah wale oh i get the, i gotta get the new wale um caravan uh, i'm not seeing much else it yes. looks like a light week so yeah had to confirm dying wishes album fragments of a bitter memory is out and please go listen to that super dope metal album I mean, I can only imagine. I've only heard the first, uh, at least like uh, three songs of it for the singles, mm-hmm. but it's been the one I've been super fucking excited for. Uh, nice. Other stuff that I see is another metal band, Enslaved, actually has an EP out. So four songs. That looks cool. Um, oh, yeah. Two things I didn't really highlight, but there are new. Uh, I did subtweet this. Mana can just go fuck itself with the one, the one song that they, cho- they chose to redo. And it could have just been any other song, but of course they had to get, they had to get personal. So they can go to hell and leave me to rot with my emotions. <laughs> and also, oh, yeah. And uh, there was a Tenacious D EP that I got like halfway through, but it was like a bunch of like demos. Uh, uh, it was a, there's tribute and there's a tribute demo and just like on a, and a, and a weird Explosivo remix that is not how you think Explosivo should go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's also what I see for, for um, new, releases, new releases on my end. We get to move on and roulette time. Oh, what is our next? Hey. Ooh, oh. what's up? I'm actually, I'm sorry. Well, I'll do, I was going to oh, say, I, cool. I have a music that I have I discovered. Yes. It, it kind of isn't super new, but it's like a month or two old, the album, but okay. it is new. If that's okay. Hey, me. Um, yeah, tell me. So Mar- I really like, I've I was. I'm been a big fan of Marina and the Diamonds for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I think she just goes by Marina now. Um, she's... Uh, yeah, so she's had a few albums. She just has her newest one, which is um, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land, I think is the album name, mm-hmm. and Man's World. I just discovered Man's World, uh, that a remix of it came up on Spotify. I really like mm-hmm. this song. I'm digging it. Nice. I mean, of course, Ancient I don't want to live Ancient. in a man's world anymore. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Me neither. Oh, yeah. Me neither, I brought girl. that out all the time when it comes all up right? on my playlist. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, turn it up. <laughs> 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 You said it's called Ancient Dreams in a Modern World? Uh, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land, yeah. Oh, modern uh, Land, okay, cool. Yeah, that's her newest album, but she's got some really great albums, like Electra Heart, Fruit, I think oh, yeah. all, all her albums yeah, I'm, are I'm, good. I'm going to search it out, cool. Awesome, so next episode, Keith, roulette time, what are we going to talk about? Our next category is going to be Guilty Pleasures, one of my favorite episodes, Ooh. because I get to reveal the dark corners of my musical taste. Um, <laughs> There's gonna be a, was, a lot of pop from me, so and I'm not even shamed. Good. Good. I'm not even shamed. Dave Grohl said, "There's no such thing as guilty pleasure. You either like something or you don't. That's true. Don't feel bad about it." <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. I'm like, um, I feel like this. I mean, you guys have already seen. I have no no guilt on what I listen to. I'm free. Yeah. You are the <laughs> embodiment like, of this show. I just realized. Yes. <laughs> and, and we can ex- we can expect the regulars next episode and maybe a guest. We'll okay. see. I'm gonna nail them down. Uh, someone we, we haven't had on the show before, so I'm excited. Nice. Well, that this concludes that concludes this episode of Jukebox Fair to Go. Thank you to the Co's for your great picks. Uh, go in order, Liz. Go with your plugs, plugs, shoutouts, anything you want. Go listen to Grandson and Marina and the Diamonds. 
uh, or Marina. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Go Excellent. give them some listens. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, shout out to plugs. Yeah, so um, I am starting to write reviews. Uh, finally got one article reviewed uh, and edited, so should be out for Geek Elite Media doing video game reviews. I'll probably start streaming because I volunteered myself to do something stupid, and I loved Until Dawn, but I guess I'm playing all t- Until Dawn all over again and might be streaming that and then writing my review because it's a f- it's not terrifying, but it's a just overall creepy ass game. Uh, Keith and I need to get together and you know re- talk about our design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love being on the show, so you can listen to me here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Super Comedy Daniel, uh, Instagram at Danny the Destroyer, and yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry, can you talk again? Yeah. You sound like a chip. You sound like uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. <laughs> Sped up. We're, we're almost done, Josue. We're almost here. I'll do the. I'll do the the plugs. Jessica, please fill in your plugs at this point. <laughs> um. Well, I'm going to go ahead and plug my other podcast, um, Love of Pages. We do books. Um, right now, the episodes that are coming out, we're doing an Italian novel called Bug, which is utterly awesome. But after that, I'm super excited. We just finished recording them. Um, we're doing a our first graphic novel. So the first three volumes of the graphic novel, Wants and Future, which is like King Arthur dystopian. And it's just amazing. Like I love it. I'm obsessed with this. I've always been afraid of getting into graphic novels because now I need to collect them all. But it's, but I am I am hooked. So keep an eye out for Love of Pages doing Wants and Future. Awesome. And as far as myself... You can find me on Twitter at WHI Podcast Keith. You can find our producer Liz because she forgot her own Twitter account. Apparently, WHI Podcast Liz. Uh, no, she's I've not been used to on hiatus. Herself. Okay, she's, she's not used to it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, me at WHI Podcast Keith. Her at WHI Podcast Liz. You can find our other show. We have issues at WHI Podcast on Twitter, uh, and of course, you can find all of this on uh, Geek Elite Media on Twitter as well as at GeekEliteMedia dot com. Jose, take a shot at it. Nope, still chipmunk. <laughs> you can find Hosway at Hosway Reads Hosway on Twitter. You can find Jukebox Vertigo at Jukebox Vertigo. And you can find uh, Hosway streaming now on Twitch at Hosway Plays Hosway. He's in the middle of trying to platinum every single God of War game. Ooh. He's up through, he did both versions of God of War 3 because he's a masochist. Uh, so now he's moving on to the newer ones. Oh my god, I'm uh, trying to platinum God of War 2 right now, actually. Let's say. So. Yeah, she's playing She's playing the new one. The new so, one. Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Like, I honestly yeah. I'm really enjoying that game. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, still still chipmunk, chipmunk brother. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll seem it's the best ending to a show we've ever done. Alright, so uh, you can check us out on, at, like I said, on Twitter at Jukebox Vertigo, where an updated playlist will be uploaded every week uh, with these selections, as well as an individual playlist for each individual category. Now, I finally get to say this. Hosui always gets to say it, so I get to say it for the first time ever. Now, let loose with your jams and geek out. This concludes our broadcast. 